Even under the worst of conditions, Al Smith and John Jacob Raskip were two individuals who were not going to be discouraged. They pressed ahead with their plans as the original Waldorf Astoria was demolished. The officers and directors of Empire State Incorporated are on the roof of the old Waldorf Astoria Hotel, about to begin demolition of that ancient and historic structure. Now, gentlemen, stand back while I start the real work of demolition. As the old Waldorf was being raised, thousands of former guests who had turned their backs on the Dowager wrote requesting room keys, china, silverware, and other ephemera as a remembrance of the great Victorian shelter and gathering post. The old Waldorf was only 38 years old. Ironically, the new structure to be called the Empire State Building got its name from the first United States President, George Washington. Washington initially called New York to be the home of the new empire, though this empire was a democracy. The Scottish-born Andrew Carnegie was the founder and driving force behind history's greatest steel company. His mills propelled the growth of America through the vast majority of construction for decades. The site rests on the banks of the Monongahela and Allegheny River, which provided cost-effective transportation of coke, iron, and finished steel products. The backbone of the Empire State Building had its origins in the rich iron ore mines of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Huge ingots were extracted from the earth and loaded onto trains which were dispatched to the great mills of the Carnegie Steel Company in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The steel order for the Empire State Building was the largest that had ever been placed. This is where the undertaking of extraordinary proportions began. Carnegie would have to produce enough steel not only to support the tallest building in the world, but a building in which contained more square footage than the last two tallest buildings in the world, 40 Wall Street and the Chrysler Building, combined. To complete this task, a method known as the Bessemer process was employed. This method was the first inexpensive industrial process for the mass production of steel. The key principle was the removal of impurities from the iron by oxidation, with air being blown through the molten ore. This made the steel stronger and last longer. The Empire State Building was one of the first skyscrapers ever built using this technology, which revolutionized the industrial age, inspiring more new technologies for decades thereafter. Here's William Weldon, a Carnegie Steel executive, who goes into great detail in this 1930 film, showing the complexity, strength, and uniqueness of the Carnegie Beam. It contained layers upon layers of support and was custom made for the Empire State Building in order to support the tens of millions of pounds of the 102-story structure. No time could be spared once the beams were finished as they were immediately loaded onto a truck for transport to New York City. Traveling roughly 450 miles by train, Carnegie's beams arrive approximately 40 to 50 hours later at the corner of 34th and 5th Avenue in New York City. The 44-ton beams were immediately hoisted into the construction site, often still warm to the touch. There was no storage space available, so the beams had to quickly be put into place as soon as they were delivered. They worked within the foundation of the building, which had gone down beneath street level to a depth of 55 feet through solid granite onto a base measuring 79,288 square feet. 
The Great Depression had devastated the construction industry by laying off thousands of skilled workers. The Empire State Building Company quickly hired the greatest skilled laborers on the market, putting together a spectacular team of talent, which was not just rare but unheard of. As many as 3,500 of the best workers a day began work on St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 1930. They worked around the clock for seven days a week, including on holidays. They would have to assemble roughly 10,000 tons of steel per month to make their deadline. In total, approximately 7 million man-hours were put into the making of the structure. And after erecting the beams for one month, the workers completed the frame for the basement. The skeleton was rising at an alarming rate, sometimes climbing almost a floor a day. Working at incredible speeds were teams of riveters in groups of four. Approximately 35 to 40 of these teams worked simultaneously on all different parts of the building. They were responsible for fastening the steel frame into place. The heater would fire up the bolts to temperatures between 1000 and 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. At the precise moment, the heater would grab the rivet and toss it straight to the catcher, who caught it with a can. At times, the catcher would have to be ready to catch a smoldering hot rivet from up to 75 feet away. The rivet was then jammed into a rivet hole and smashed into a wide cap, permanently merging together two more sections of the skyscraper framework. As the summer of 1930 drew to a close, the structure continued to rise rapidly, so rapidly in fact that the architects could not keep up. They anxiously and quickly began drawing up plans for each individual floor just in time for them to actually be put into place. But it was the steel workers who faced the sharpest deadline. There was more than twice the structural steel in Empire State than in the Chrysler Building, and the winter was fast approaching which would make it nearly impossible to complete their tasks. And as was so often with the Starrets, when there was a problem, there was an even better solution. The derrick was a large, multifaceted crane, ideal for hoisting steel beams and other heavy supplies. There were as many as 16 derricks working on the Empire State Building at the same time. They consisted of movable booms, cables, and pulleys that allowed the workers to place their heavy freight precisely into place. As the building grew taller, workers actually built around the derricks. The large cranes miraculously were able to pull themselves up onto each floor so they could keep up with the rapid growth of the building. As a result, a stunning 22 stories of steel were erected in just 22 working days, a pace that broke all previous records of construction. So as the winter drew near, interior work was well underway, such as painting and bricklaying, 